So, welcome. We're we'll talking about quality assurance and forensic science. If you're joining here, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate you guys going, watching the mad forensic scientist. So, quality assurance and forensic science. Why is it important? And what is it? What is it, in general? So quality assurance um, is a systematic approach used to ensure that all aspects of a process or system are of the highest quality possible. In forensic science, this ensures that the methods used to analyze the evidence are reliable, accurate, and scientifically sound. The main goal is to establish and maintain a high level of confidence in the analytical results. That way, the results of the forensic analysis, analysis can have significant consequences. This includes the impacts of criminal trials, and it is essential that analytical results are reliable and accurate. This was kicked off by the National Academy of Sciences, or the NAS. The NAS report in 2000. Nine released groundbreaking report titled Strengthening Forensic Science in the United States, A Path Forward. This was commissioned by Congress in response to concerns about the reliability and validity of forensic science evidence. The NAS report made several key recommendations for improving forensic science, and it kicked off many programs. And it followed up by the PCAST report in 2016. This was the President's Council of Advisors of Science and Technology, and was released a report on forensic science. Specifically, forensic science in criminal courts, ensuring the scientific validity of future comparison methods. The PCAST reports focus specifically on the scientific validity of future comparison methods. This includes fingerprints, firearms, um, and bite mark analysis. The report found that many of these methods had not been subjected to rigorous scientific testing to establish their validity and reliability. The PCAST report made several key recommendations for improving the use of forensic science in criminal courts, including strengthening the foundations of forensic science through increased research and testing, establishing standards for the validity and reliability of forensic science methods, improving the education and training of forensic science practitioners, and enhancing the transparency and openness of forensic science method methodologies and results, as well as increasing the role of independent scientific experts in the judicial pro process. The PCAST report has significant impact on forensic science community, leading to increased scrutiny of future comparison methods and the greater emphasis on scientific rigor and transparency in the overall field. However, implementing the report's recommendations has also met with some resistance and challenges. One of the key components of quality assurance in forensic science is the use of standards and guidelines. Standards are established by regulatory bodies and provide a set of minimum requirements for the quality of forensic science work. These guidelines are developed by forensic or by professional organizations and provide recommendations for the best practices in a particular area of forensic science. Important groups include the Scientific Working Groups, or the, S the SWIGs, established by the FBI, um, the AAFS Standards Board, or the ASB, the International Org Organization for Standardization, or ISO, and the Organization of Scientific Area Committees, OSAC, which was created by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. Shown here is SWIGDAM, the ASB, ISO 17025, and OSAC. So important things about accreditation. Accreditation is critical, yet it's a voluntary component of quality assurance in forensic science. The accreditation proce process by which an independent organization evaluates a laboratory's operation procedures to ensure that they meet the established standards for quality, reliability, and accuracy. Accreditation provides several key benefits for forensic science laboratories, including increased credibility and trustworthiness in the eyes of the legal system as well as the public, improved quality of laboratory operations and procedures, enhanced training and professional development opportunities for lab personnel, and access to resources and support from accrediting organizations. Accreditation is not a one-time achievement, but is rather an ongoing process, and laboratories must maintain compliance with these standards and undergo regular re-evaluations to maintain their accredited status. So accreditation bodies include the ANSI National Accreditation Board, or ANAB. This is the largest accreditation body in North America and provides services in more than 75 countries. There's also the American Association of Laboratory Accreditation, which is the largest among the world and only independent, nonprofit, um, internationally recognized accreditation body in the United States. As well as the College of American Pathologists, or CAP. And, and previously, there was the American Society of Crime Lab Directors, which was taken over by ANAB, as well as the American Board of Forensic Toxicologists, which also uses ANAB now as their accreditation body. If the law has made you a witness, remain a man of science. You have no victim to avenge, no guilty or innocent person to convict or save. You must bear testimony within the limits of the science. I think this is very important. I think this, we need to 
realize that we have limits as scientists and that we don't know everything and not everything is within a 100 percent absolute unknown certainty we need to accept that and understand that especially whenever it's somebody's life or death is involved so this document this guiding principles are set forth specifically the the professional codes and suggestions made by leaders in the forensic community so here are the here's the list there's 19 points i'm not going to read them all i'm just going to highlight a few um but they kind of broken down into three sections including professionalism and the first thing in here is to conduct full and fair examinations um, they're aware of their limitations and render only conclusions within their area of expertise they honestly communicate within all parties that means the prosecutors the defense and other expert witnesses then the second aspect is competency and proficiency. They're committed to career-long learning in the forensic disciplines that they practice and are properly trained to determine and, oh, and are properly trained and determined to be competent through testing and use appropriate controls and standards when con conducting examinations and analysis. This is a big part of quality assurance here, is this specifically here, competency and proficiency, as well as clear communication. So they accurately represent their education, training, and area of expertise, support sound scientific techniques and practices and do not use their positions to pressure examiners or other technicians and they attempt to qualify their results while testifying when asked questions and don't give a simple yes or no answer so if they're tried if the if a if one of the if an attorney the prosecution or defense tries to get you to just say yes or no elaborate on your questions elaborate on your answers whenever questioned so quality assurance management or qam is the structure is the organizational structure and responsibility procedures policies and resources implementing quality management every accreditation program requires a qam and each lab defines their own qam but it must meet the requirements of their accreditation body um, there is the qas for forensic biology abft for forensic toxicology they have much more specific requirements than any other section and these standards describe the quality assurance requirements for the lab um, in DNA testing. So the QAS is specifically for DNA and anybody using CODIS, um, anybody using co uploading CODIS, they have to follow this QAS. It's effective in July 1st, 2020. And if, as, and if a laboratory wants to submit profiles to CODIS, they must be accredited with this standard. Quality control. So quality control is different from uh, a quality assurance. Quality control is the measure that are designed to ensure that the laboratory procedures are accurate, reliable, and consistent. These often include negative and positive controls um, that are uh, samples that are known characteristics to ensure the accuracy and reliability of the results. Blind testing. So blind testing, whenever uh, uh, a sample is introduced to the laboratory with a known answer, but the analysts do not know the known answer. And then proficiency testing. These are samples that are provided from an external evaluation to evaluate the accuracy and reliability of results. These quality control measures are designed to ensure that our laboratory procedures are accurate, reliable, and consistent. Um, they include instrumentation and equipment calibration, peer review, so that they're using you're using peer reviewed um, analysis in your in your process. And these measures are essential to ensuring the accuracy and reliability of the laboratory results. They also provide means for identifying and correcting errors and ensure that the lab operations are consistent and reliable over time. Next important thing is documentation and record keeping, which includes case notes, laboratory notebooks, chain of custody, quality control records, which includes the, your controls, blind testing, proficient testing, and equipment and calibration, as well as training records. The chain of custody is important. It's a critical component of forensic science and helps establish the authenticity and integrity of the evidence in legal proceeding. It refers to the chronological documentation or paper trail that records the custody and control of transfer, analysis, and deposition of physical or digital evidence. Maintaining the integ integrity of the chain of custody is crucial in quality assurance for forensic science and ensures that the evidence is properly handled, analyzed, and presented. Uh, we go with the process of garbage in, garbage out. So the chain of custody ensures that we have good, good quality evidence going in and good results coming out. So you must document every step of the process. So personnel qualifications are important. Um, the practitioners must have demonstrated they have the necessary education, training, and experience to perform their duties. And these, pro these uh, requirements can depend based on the discipline, um, but most have a general qualification of including a bachelor's degree, some kind of training, and certification. In addition, they must uh, have a central range of skills, including attention to detail, critical thinking, the ability to communicate 
clearly and effectively. So uh, forensic scientists, they kind of have to do a little bit of everything. They kind of have to be a jack of all trades. So training and education. Forensic practitioners must possess the necessary skills and knowledge, which includes a uh, multiple variety of training and educational opportunities, including degree programs, training courses, workshops, and conferences. These are necessary to develop the skills as well as network. In addition to formal training, many forensic or organizations offer ongoing professional development. These include mentoring programs. The QAS actually requires continuing education. And then moving on to error management. Um, effective error management involves identifying and mitigating potential sources of error, as well as developing protocols for reporting, documenting, and addressing errors when they occur. This requires transparency and the ability to learn from mistakes as well as implementing corrective actions to prevent those happening in the future. One of the key performances, uh, one of the key principles of error management is a culture of openness and accountability. You must be willing to acknowledge and report errors as they occur without fear of retribution or reprisal. So you must work collaboratively with your colleagues to identify and address potential sources of error development to develop and implement strategies for preventing errors from occurring in the future. Forensic practitioners must be able to manage and analyze large volumes of data, including DNA profiles, crime scene photographs, as well as other evidence. So we must have tools that are able to handle these large things, and that leads us to Laboratory Information Management System, or LIMS system. Shown here are three systems, examples of those, Star LIMS, Apollo LIMS, and Justice Track. Those are some of the most popular ones used in forensic science. And then proficiency testing. This is important for laboratories. They should participate in some kind of proficiency testing program on a regular basis to ensure that the laboratory operations and procedures are accurate and reliable. They should be based off the laboratory's expertise and should be selected from a recognized provider. These tests are designed to evaluate the laboratory's performance, improve laboratory performance, and demonstrate that the laboratory is competent. Which leads us to validations. Validations are an important aspect of quality assurance in forensic science, and they help to ensure the accuracy and reliability of techniques and methods used. They establish the purpose and the scope of the analysis. They select appropriate test materials, develop a protocol, conduct multiple iterations of tests, reproducibility, analyze the results to determine the accuracy, develop appropriate acceptance criteria, document the results of the validation in a clear and transparent matter, manner. These validations are part of the requirement for the ANAB. They require all anal analysis to be uh, validated by their minimum requirements. And shown here are what's listed in the ANAB of what needs to be performed for method validation. Validations are also listed out in the ASB as well as the ASTM and the OSAC registry list, a rep repository of high, high quality, technically sound published proposed standards for forensic science. These documents maintain minimum requirements and best practices, and all the standards on the registry have passed a rigorous technical and quality review by OSAC members. If you're just tuning in, this would be a good time to hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button. I really appreciate you guys watching. But digging into the ASB, the ASB has multiple standards for validations covering various disciplines of forensics. The ASB 063 is the implementation of 3D technologies in uh, firearm and tool mark comparisons. The 036 is the practice for forensic toxicology. 072 is the validation of uh, bloodstain pattern analysis, and 047 is the wildlife forensic validation standard, which is pretty cool. Um, going in even further, there's the 038, which is a standard for um, DNA methods, 037, which is serology, and the 114, which is used in the internal validation of software, as well as 020, which is the laboratory mixture interpretation protocol. I think the 036 is one of the strongest written validations by the ASB. It's specifically for the validation in forensic toxicology. It's very comprehensive. They detail every step of the process, including minimal acceptance. They detail examples of the scenarios in the appendix. Um, they provide four extensive examples in screening, um, interference studies, limited detection, ionization, enhancement of suppression, process sample stability, and then in qualitative analysis, there's bias, calibration model, carryover, interference study, same ionization, suppression, or enhancement, limited detection, limited quantitation, and precision, as well as dilution integrity and process sample stability. So the ASB 036 goes into crazy amount of detail. That is one of the most detailed um, validation standards um, that exist in forensic science. 
the ASTM has uh, multiple standards, uh, mostly covering chemistry disciplines. Um, shown here is a 3522-21, which is quality assurance um, and chemical and forensic chemical analysis. But the but quality assurance has been met with challenges, but it has opportunities as well. Some of the key challenges include resource constraints. Um, by having to do all these extra testing, um, it can be tough for a laboratory to, to meet it with terms of staffing, um, to do these, all these validations, the equipment that's necessary to keep up with technology, um, which is important with keeping up with the evolving technologies. As new technologies emerge, uh, organizations have to stay up to date. And there's complex legal and regulatory frameworks. The laws keep changing, especially when it comes to drugs, um, drug chemistry, and analogs and things of that nature. So you have to stay up with those. So despite these challenges, there's some key opportunities for collaboration and networking, training and education. There's constantly people who are trying to expand the field as well as the technology innovation. So the technology is constantly innovating. They're constantly expanding, constantly trying to find new ways to help solve these complex criminal cases. So with that, I will take any questions. As you see here, quality, quality assurance and quality control, they're very, very uh, up for debate. Uh, for interpretation but yeah i appreciate you guys watching i hope you guys enjoyed this um so be sure if you really liked it hit that subscribe button um check out the shorts um check out the playlist we have uh toxicology tuesdays we have a bunch of toxicology pre le lectures um we have some speaking of the asb 036 there's one of the validation here shown here right now um if you click on this link uh you can see a method that was validated using the asb 036 so as an example um, but yeah, so that's quality assurance. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you, if you have any questions, you can feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, but I appreciate you guys watching. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. I enjoyed presenting it. I enjoyed talking with you guys. I spent a lot of time working on this and I just, I enjoy sharing this information with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you hit that subscribe button and I hope you follow for more.